Hello and welcome back to the Gaming Guild. Alex here with some more V Rising. Uh, I did a little bit of grinding uh, in between the last episode and now. Uh, biggest difference is I found a blueprint for a merciless copper axes. Uh, this just kind of uh, boosted my gear level three more points. Um, so that put me up to 39 and then uh, while I was out I also found a brute that I wanted to uh, absorb their blood. So I got uh, one more gear level from that. Uh, we are going to be hunting the boss today. We're going to be going after Clive the Firestarter. Uh, he is 10 levels below me right now, uh, but I'm going to need uh, all that extra bonus uh, just to face him. He's a pretty tough one. All of the remaining bosses uh, definitely get harder and harder as they go along. You can do a little fast traveling. Uh, get a little bit closer to this guy. So on the map here, uh, Clive's area is uh, right here, kind of in the, down in the corner. Um, you see, there's like a rock right here, and I think he just travels around that rock. So we have a little bit to go. Um, definitely. Um, Really, I think the first boss where you really push to the limit of traveling and uh, can see night disappear and turn into day by the time you get to the boss and then you're stuck in a daytime fight. So he's really one that uh, can catch you off guard the first time you go to fight him. So I am going to be using axes now instead of uh, my mace as far as my primary weapon goes. Uh, the biggest difference is my special attack. Um, I kind of just lunge forward and do this big uh, two-handed swipe. Uh, and then it makes my next attack a little bit faster. Not quite as good, in my opinion, as the maces. I don't have that little somersault that kind of helps me get past the enemy and you know, line up my attacks better. Uh, simple carpets. Okay. Um, this area is going to be filled with harder enemies, um, even though they're you know lower level than me. Uh, they're only a few levels lower, uh, so a lot of them will pretty quickly. Uh, knock down my health. So I do have to be a little bit more careful not to let myself get overwhelmed and really not to burn up too much of my blood, take too much damage before the boss fight. Let's see. I can. So I haven't been using this too often. Uh, they made the wolf a lot faster in the recent update, so uh, it actually kind of benefits. Ooh, Tristan. While I was grinding off screen, uh, I did run into Tristan. Tried fighting him for a second. Uh, uh, even though right now he's only four levels above me, uh, there's still no way I can beat him. Quite difficult. Another thing I did, uh, I made some bags. Uh, these bags here, um, I can collapse them down. Uh, but each of them has a, a purpose, so uh, herb bag holds three herbs, gem bags will hold gems, research bag will hold books and paper. It just gives me nine extra slots to put stuff into. Let's 
So the biggest thing right now is I don't want to start this fight with Clive until I'm ready. Um, of a rough fight. So yeah, he has a lot of higher level guys around him. Uh, these dead eyes are some of the worst uh, just because they can quickly do a lot of damage to me and their accuracy is good enough that uh, they can kind of tell what direction I'm facing and lead their shots so unless I change directions or use my speed boost or something uh, they'll still hit me. Pull one or pull two. So if you couldn't tell from all the sulfur around here, Clive is going to give me the recipe to uh, utilize sulfur. It's going to uh, start making explosives, kind of like uh, these guys here. Uh, but the big thing is this thing right here that uh, takes a second and then explodes in a pretty big blast. Uh, that thing is going to be important for unlocking the next area. Quincy, the uh, Bandit King, is kind of protected from a barrier that needs that, that explosive to knock it down. So, I think I'm going to leave those guys and just see if I can keep him in this area right here. I don't have anybody up the stairs right now. Full on health. Once it gets a little bit closer. Actually, it's almost daytime. Alright. Kind of just waited in the corner for a little bit. Protected from some shade. Waiting for uh, the next night. So I have Clive about to make another round, so I have those guys over there, so same plan as earlier. I'm just going to wait for him to get into this area, be just a second now. Um, and then hopefully I can defeat him uh, with what I got. I don't have any healing potions right now. Um, that's still kind of uh, coming up is the ability to start making potions and getting all that going. So hopefully I can beat him. Uh, usually this is the point where you really notice when you don't have a couple other players with you to help out. And that's really unfortunate. His biggest thing is he starts throwing a bomb that just kind of cascades into smaller bombs. Uh, 
that spread out like that. Um, his other big thing is that he can kind of teleport out of the attack or out of his area. Uh, and he drops a big bomb when he does that. So if I had just teleported in, it gets a little tricky to get out of there. Like that. And he's immune to his own bombs. Not the stationary bombs, which is helpful. But he is moving a lot, and he's kind of pushing me into other fights. So let's see if I can limit them a bit. Uh, I think that was worse for me. Hopefully, I can beat him quickly. That one spell. Whew. Went a lot better than I thought. This little dice there lost a big chunk of my health in that one blast. Um, ooh, a merciless copper mace. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, that way I'll have both the axe and the mace available to me. That's gonna hurt on the way back. Now that I have Clive defeated, uh, I can make an alchemy table, which will be nice because now I can make potions that I get the recipes for. I can also make this uh, minor explosive uh, box. Uh, it also gave me a cool uh, new ability. Uh, so for a dash attack, now I actually have, kind of like how uh, my Chaos Volley is like I'm using two shadow boats. Uh, Veil of Chaos gives me two little dashes. Um, so I can kind of switch back, uh, move a little bit more efficiently in a fight. Um, it also creates an explosion wherever the uh, first teleportation point was. So they'll go after where my first spot was. And then if they get too close, they'll just uh, get blown up in it. Yeah, let's go ahead and head on back. My blood's getting a little low. Uh, we do have some sulfur. not let me stay a wolf. Oh cool, they fixed that. So it used to be that if you took any damage at all as a wolf, that uh, you would revert back into being a vampire. So if you ever had silver on you, you could never be a wolf. 
it seems like they fixed that, so I'm still, you know, slowly losing a hit point, gaining a hit point. Uh, but at least I can use the wolf to fast travel. Back to my castle. First off, I'm going to throw equipment that I don't need into the devourer. So when I do my uh, Veil of Chaos, there's like a little moment between castings of it where I could uh, use my second one. Uh, you see like a little bar that was kind of counting down. Uh, if I take too long, it's not going to let me do my second teleport. So I will get into a rhythm with it uh, just so that... I can maintain that whenever I need to. Uh, See what do I have? I have two books. Yep, copper and merciless mace. Some carpets. Merciless copper mace. I don't care about the co the carpets too much, but now that I have the mace, let's go check out what it takes to make it. Alright, two crude topazes, whetstones, and leather. So, oops, whetstones, some topazes, and leather. That made. And this way, it doesn't really matter if we're using an axe or a mace, uh, we'll be the same level either way. I'm going to skip the putrid rat for now. I don't really need him. Uh, so I think I'm going to go after... Uh, ooh. I think Pelora. Um, she's actually over by where Clive was, so I am going to go back. But I'm hoping that I'm going to use up most of the daytime just in traveling. I'm also going to need to look for some more blood. I'm getting pretty low, and it's not going to suffice for another fight. Um, I'll kind of lose all my fast healing that I can do. So, I'm going to jump over here.
So while we're on the road, let's see. I'm tracking Flora. It says she's close, but I guess it's not too far. She's up in this area right here. She kind of has like this little sanctuary up there. It's uh, actually pretty nice. I'm going to be keeping an eye out for anything over 30%. It's decent. If I don't see anything on the road, I might actually jump back into Clive's area and see if any of his people are running around. Actually, I wonder if I can get this. Creature isn't the best blood type. Um, movement speed, some sun resistance, which doesn't really help me too much. Um, higher levels is pretty good. The damage reduction and the health regeneration is really nice. Uh, but at 44%, I'm not even getting close with that, so. Right above Clive's area. But you know, just like earlier, Clive's area is full of sunlight, so I don't really like being here too much. Also killing a little bit of daytime. Uh, Plora's area has a bit of shade. Um, I think it's a little misty, but it's still pretty out in the open. So if the mist isn't strong enough uh, to protect me from the sunlight, then it'll be a really bad fight there. Where Clive was definitely more, you know, physical attacks with his explosions. Um, and I really had to, you know, watch where I was on the battlefield. Flora is going to be much more direct spell attacks. I think she has some, like, homing, uh, like, magical bats or birds or something like that that kind of lock on and try to hit me. So yeah, Gleaming Meadows, this is Flora's area. Yeah, looks like it's sunny in there. So I might just kill a little bit more time. Alright. Uh, so, 44% blood. It's night time, so let's go take on Flora. I think originally Pelora uh, had the recipe for making the teleporter, so you kind of had to go fight her just to unlock the ability to teleport between places. Uh, so it's nice that they added that in as just like something that you can unlock, uh, but it did make Pelora a little bit more of an out of the way, um, slightly less necessary boss. Um, where I feel like she should be uh, pretty important to completing. 
So, yeah, let's see if I can do this. The trees foretold your coming. Oh yeah, so she causes fear, which uh, makes me have to run away from her. Be gone! Luckily, the fear doesn't last too long. She follows it up with the uh, wolf attack that she does. Spirits, hear me! And there's the bat butterfly like thing. Uh -huh. Summons a second. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to beat her. She also uh, healed a lot of the damage I dealt to her. Depends if I keep my weapons or not. <sighs> Got my weapons. Got my armor. Well, I can see if I come across another blood that's high and try to give that another go. Um, the warrior's not bad. and then he blows up to my dash attack. One brute's pretty good. If I get over 30% brute, I'll get a gear level out of it. So that kind of gives me a reason to try to look for a brute over anything else.
82% warrior. That's better than a lot of things that I could get. Let's see. Increased physical power, reduced cooldown of weapon skills, reduced damage taken. Well, I won't be striking enemies at full health. Striking. They're at full health? Maybe. Um, so. Not as ideal as I would have liked, but I'll work with it for now. Oh, brute 69. That's beautiful. Okay, kill this guy. This is what I want to go with. A little lower percentage, but it's going to give me one gear level. I should probably take some time to go get healing potions. That seems like a really big waste of time. So we're gonna try Plora one more time. Come on. There we go. And if I can beat her this time, great. If I can't, uh, then I know I'm gonna need to come in with uh, some potions or something to uh, make the fight a little bit safer for me. Again, uh, a lot of these bosses are meant to be fought with multiple players working together. Um, definitely puts me at a disadvantage in this game. Let's see. Pick all that up. Get a heal. And I'm gonna use my mace this time. You are something unnatural. I can hear the screams all around you. So the biggest thing is just not getting hit by. of her spells. Somersault with the mace definitely helps. Just kind of keeps some pressure on her. Oh, she's trying to heal. No. Oh, that was close. 
I definitely think the mace gave me a way better advantage in that fight. The blood a little bit, but not nearly as much. Let's see, what did I pick up? Unstable rock. I'm not really sure how to use these jewels. Um, I'll probably look that up uh, after a while. Hey, and the sun's rising. So these meadows are a really good place to find uh, just some uh, alchemy ingredients. Uh, again, not a lot of shade, but uh, before I leave, might as well try to get what I can out of this. I think I'm pretty good. I have a few different seeds. Yeah, lots of materials. Let's turn into a wolf and start making our way back. Almost back to the way gate. Here's that camp that I mostly cleared out. Wolves don't really care about me when I'm also a wolf. I think when you're a rat, if you fight the future rat, you can become a rat. Uh, and in rat form, I don't think anybody really sees you as a threat. You can kind of sneak around that way. Uh, the bear is a nice one. Um, a bear lets you destroy large objects um, as if you used the explosives. So that can be handy. Did I get anything? Just some paper. Um, I made a stone coffin uh, while I was grinding. Uh, nothing really special about it. It's just an improvement over my wooden coffin.
space. I want to throw all of these into the blood press at some point, but I kind of want to wait until I have an alchemy lab floor. Uh, that way I just, you know, only spent three hearts to get uh, blood essence. Uh, speaking of which... Uh, castle... Forge... Workshop... Castle... So I don't have alchemy flooring yet. I think... That drops randomly over in Clive's area. So yeah, so Flora now, um, she gives this garlic resistance brew, uh, which is helpful later when I'm going to be in an area with garlic. Uh, otherwise, um, it's really just like for growing stuff now. So not nearly as uh, valuable as it used to be. Uh, yeah, Clive, Lydia... Nicholas will give me a paper press. Um, he's pretty close by, uh, but he's kind of like uh, Gorswine the Ravager. Um, he's kind of like this undead guy who's uh, pretty tricky. Um, it will kind of be like that fight with Flora where, uh, you know, it'll be neck and neck up until the end. Uh, but just because he's so chaotic with his spells. Uh, Ferocious Bear doesn't really give anything. And then, yeah, Quincy the Bandit King will give me access to the iron uh, level of stuff. So, iron weapons, uh, the, the Hollow Fang, which is the next tier of armor, Smithy and Tailoring Bench to make them. So he definitely kind of unlocks Act 2 for you. But... Uh, I don't think anybody has the alchemy floor. So I think somebody... Yeah, I think it's right here, and I think it's, like I said, uh, over in Clive's area. So I'll probably grind a little bit more before the next episode, and just try to see if I can find it over there. Uh, we spent a little bit of time there, but uh, I could definitely do more, kill more enemies, um, possibly kill Clive again, uh, just to see if I can get that. There's also a bunch of stuff down in this portion of the forest here. I can go all through here. Uh, to find stuff. Uh, it's funny if you look, this right here and this right here are identical. Uh, these, this is the uh, tutorial area. Uh, so this is the little crypt that I started in and I came out and kind of went through the graveyard to get out of here. And it's just identical depending on which way you went. So, yeah. I think that's going to do that for this episode. Thank you for joining, and I will see you all in the next adventure. Bye-bye.